Now you know that I love my coffee. Fair to say I'm obsessed with my coffee. Can't start the day without it. What I really want to know is how to make good coffee at home. So I've come to the Breville Kitchen to speak to their guru, guru Phil McKnight. Phil. Hi Paula. Hello. How are you? You're going to teach me about coffee today, everything I need to know and make me one I hope. I am. Absolutely I'm going to make you a coffee today. So what a lot of people don't understand about what makes good coffee is first of all you need a machine that's going to give you really stable water temperature. So plus or minus a degree C is really critical. Mm -hmm. But the other elements that are really important as well is you need a grinder so you can grind on demand. Uh, you don't want to pre-grind coffee, you want to grind your coffee directly before you extract it. That way you'll get the maximum flavour out of the beans that you've purchased. So for me, I, need a, I want a machine that looks sexy, which this one does, and one that is going to give me the same sort of coffee that I get from my barista, who I love, every morning. Now, it's how, how do I achieve that with this? Show me, you have to show me. Yeah, absolutely. So what we're going to do now is we'll just take out the group handle. You always so want that to... looks exactly like the one at the store. Yeah, it's exactly the That's same a size. Proper, proper. Yeah. I'd impress people with that. I love yeah. the idea of after a dinner party saying, "Can I make you a coffee?" Absolutely. <laughs> so, so we're just going to uh, use our 800 Smart Grinder now. We're just going to grind uh, directly into our porter filter, and this uh, grinder has dose control. So what that means is it controls the amount of coffee that goes into the filter baskets. Uh, and that's one of the most difficult elements to control. So this looks after it for you. So what sort of sort of grain should you have to put through a machine like this? So you should have um, quite a fine uh, grind size, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be so fine that it's going to block the filter. So uh, well, for the lay person, what do you set it on? We set it on around about four or five divisions from oh, okay. the from the end of the scale. Okay. Oh, look, it's got a very easy thing on it. Okay. Absolutely. Yep, that's easy. Okay, hook so me we'll, up. So let's <laughs> let's grind some coffee. Yeah. <laughs> All we're going to do now is we're just going to distribute the grinds. Oh, it's Tamp. even got one of those little presses. Yeah. It's got a tamper built in. See, what is it? What, so why what is it called a tamper? Because it's the process it's doing. It's tamping the coffee. So right. it's, it's actually compressing it uh, and levelling it at the same time. Okay, so we've ground, we've tamped. Yeah. And now... We're just going to insert into the group head and we're going to extract our coffee immediately. And is that... Is, you're doing that on purpose? Absolutely, so yeah. So fresh is, fresh is what you need to absolutely, do? Absolutely, yeah. You don't no want to sitting it you there don't insert the handle. having a phone call. No, absolutely. As soon as you insert the, uh, insert the group handle, you want it to brew. So you can see our espresso is really dark, rich. It's dripping like warm honey. Yeah. And that's the flow you should be looking for. Now, so now I think there's enough espresso. So. Okay, so you're calling it es espresso. Now obviously yep. people order espressos, yes. but you're calling any form of coffee that comes out of it espresso. Let's talk about actual... they're all espresso based. Right, so let's yep. talk about actual coffees before you make that yeah, for sure. me. There are so many kinds of coffee. Yes. So an espresso is what, one shot, two shots? Traditionally espresso is 25 mils of just straight espresso in a 60 to 90 mil demitasse uh, cup. Yeah. How is it different to a short black? Same thing. So they're the same, the same thing. thing. There yep. you go. Espresso and short black, same thing. Long black, how is that different? A long black would be um, one of these filled up with about that much of hot water mm -hmm. and then uh, slightly short of a double shot of espresso floated over the top. I would have always done it the other way. Put the espresso put in and then yeah. put the hot water. Mm -hmm. What that does is when you um, introduce the hot water into the cup, it destroys the um, layer of crema, which contains a lot of delicate aromatics. So you've lost all of those aromatics from the beverage. That's really interesting. Yeah, so okay, then. Difference between a piccolo latte and a macchiato. Uh, piccolo latte is generally a single shot of espresso. So that's 25 to 30 mils of espresso. Mm -hmm. And the balance uh, around 60 to 70 mils of milk to fill the rest of the cup. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a piccolo. Yeah. A macchiato is a single shot of espresso with a small amount of textured milk just delicately placed in the centre of the crema. More like foam. And and is there any real difference between a flat white and a latte? Um, a flat white is generally, if it's in this, uh, there is a difference. If because, it in, because of the vessel? Because of the, not only the latte is glass and the flat white is porcelain, mm -hmm. but this is um, 200 mils in total volume and this is 220. So you're always going to get a slightly weaker coffee because you'll put the same volume of espresso in each of them. In a latte is exactly. a bit weaker. Exactly. Right. So right. if you want a slightly stronger coffee, um, go just go for a flat white. 
And cappuccino? Cappuccino is, um, is really, in Australia, in modern terms these days, it's a flat white with chocolate on top of it. I would love you to make me. Mm -hmm. I'm a flat white girl, so okay. can you turn that into a flat white Yeah, for absolutely, me? yeah. So what we need to do here is choose the right size jug. Mm -hmm. So don't you know, use a massive jug if you're just gonna make one coffee. And does it need to be metal? Uh, yeah, it always needs to be metal. Stainless steel is always better. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get them in a variety of finishes these days. You can get them in polished stainless or you can even get them in black, mm -hmm. black anodized stainless. Mm -hmm. So fresh cold milk. Yep, cold. So with these jugs, um, they work best if they're filled up to around about this point. Mm -hmm. If you overfill them, they still work pretty well, but if you underfill them, they don't texture that well. So this is around about the optimum. Hang on, height. now we're texturing. We're not yeah. heating milk up, we're texturing. We're tampering, we're texturing. What Very is texturing simple. milk? Texturing is um, we're introducing steam into the milk, so it will increase in volume. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it's not a two-part process. It happens both at the same time we're bringing it up to drinking temperature. Okay, I think this is the part that people can easily get wrong. Yeah, I get can tell confused. when, when yep. it's burnt, I can tell when it's too hot or yep. it's turned to cheese. Yep. How do you do this? How do you get it right? Oh, it's really simple. So all you need to do is just perch your steam wand because there'll be a small amount of condensed water, as you can see, um, in the wand. Place it straight into the milk yep. and open the steam wand uh, straight up. Oh, that's so, a neat yeah. little thing. So we've got steam on demand with this machine. So we could, because we have a separate steam boiler. So what we're doing here now is we're just gently breaking the surface of the milk there with the uh, tip of the steam wand. And you can hear it's actually introducing steam into that milk, which is volumizing the milk. Now I had a brief run as a barista oh, back in the day. Yep, used to make. So now it's just a three hundred and fifty coffees a morning. Um, and I used to tell by the just the touch, the touch of yep. it. And is that how yep. people should do it? That's how you should do it. But if you're not confident doing it that way, it's easy just to put a milk thermometer uh, in the jug. And when you, you sort of calibrate your hand, mm -hmm. okay, so right, that's the temperature I like, and it says 65. So now I know that that's the right temperature for me. So. I think coffee should be more on feel. I'm I, I'm 100% in agreement. Thermometers with that. are for wimps. <laughs> So you can see um, you can see our milk there. It's really glassy. It's like wet paint. Now every barista does that. Yep. Why? Um, it just settles the milk, mm -hmm. so it'll be really quite volumey, maybe up to here. And then when you collapse, like that, collapse. It just it settles everything and makes the whole uh, milk, uh, like head and body, become integrated as one. Grind, tamper, texture, collapse. Exactly. Now we now we swirl the milk to to polish it yep. and bring it back together. We take our espresso, which you can see there, mm -hmm. we give that a light swirl to break the surface tension. And all we're gonna do now is we're just gonna gradually just introduce the milk into the espresso. We're just making a bit of a palette here, a bit of a blank canvas. How do you do the drawings? Oh, Show it's just off. years and years of practice. You make 700 a day like that for 10 years. So really you just have to practice. You have to practice, yeah. There's no shortcuts, unfortunately. Can I try? Absolutely. Smells good. Yum. I don't call you the coffee man for nothing. That's delicious. It's Thank super, you. super smooth. When you're choosing your coffee, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody, everybody has a different taste for coffee, I think. People, Absolutely. It's such a personal thing like fragrance. Is, is there a way of knowing that, a, you know, is there a certain kind of bean that is bitter, a sort of kind of bean or a region that is smooth, like wine? Is it the similar thing? It is very similar to wine in that respect that certain regions of the world that grow coffee will have certain flavour attributes. So, so if you're choosing at home, if you see, yep. you know, a Ribica or where should you, you know, if you, if you like a really strong coffee, what should you buy? You should be going to something, say, Colombian or Brazilian based, but ask the barista where you're buying your coffee. Just mm -hmm. say, this is the coffee I normally like to drink. I normally like to make a cappuccino or a latte. I, no I like it strong with a lot of body. Uh, and they will be able to provide you with, um, with the beans to get there. Mm. Now, one of the things that I, um, one of the reasons that I'm thinking of having a coffee machine at home yep. is because I did the maths and I worked out that I spend nearly two and a half thousand dollars on coffee per annum. That made me go, <laughs> and I worked out that this machine is is half of that. Yeah, exactly. Which would leave me $1,500 to spend on coffee beans or shoes. 
and or both. Or both. But I think that that's that is a that I think people get quite scared of the investment of a good machine. Yeah. And it is fundamental to buy a good machine, isn't it? Absolutely. This, this one's going to see you out, kind of thing. If you look yep. after it and yep. care for it. So yes, that's the that's the coffee maths for you. To do it, it's frightening if you work out how much you spend on coffee every year. Um, well, I am completely sold. I've learned a lot, a lot. I can tamper, I can grind, I can texture, texture, and I can. Yeah, you can. What's that thing collapse. called? Collapse. That's it. I can do all of that. I can make my own coffee, and you should too. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, you're welcome. Cheers. Cheers.